everybody and welcome to today's daily devotional where we concentrate on a time of prayer. Now I'm going to use part of Psalm 90 for our prayer session today and I want to explain it a little bit before then we use it in our prayer. I'll read it to you and then explain some um, thoughts that I had that just inspired me to even uh, use it in prayer, but uh, to uh, use the concept that it has here about God and not, not a concept of who God is. It explains even more who this God is that we are trying to learn to be intimate with, to, to know, to not just have knowledge in our head, but knowledge in our heart. Psalm 90 starts like this. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Lord, you have been our dwelling place. You have been our refuge. You have been the place we go to that we know that you, that you, where you are and you're in the whole world. You're everywhere. But you are. It's you. It's not the world where we dwell upon, even though we dwell in the world right now. It is you we dwell in that gives us peace and strength and courage. And you have been available in all generations, from age to age, for everybody, no matter the age that we are, where we, where we were born, when we were born, from the beginning of time, you've been here. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You have always been here, God. You have always been here. You are God. And this God who's always been here from age to age, from to all generations that have ever existed on the earth. You are God to all. You are stable. You are steadfast. Your love never fades. You are there for us. And this ability, this nature, this is who you are, brings me peace, brings me a satisfaction that, oh my goodness, my dwelling place where I can dwell with you, in you, because of what who you are, you dwell within us, you, in, you invite this intimacy, relationship to be with us. But also you, you know, the Holy Spirit, your Holy Spirit dwells within us when we invite you into our lives, when we surrender our lives to you. This refuge is available for my life. When the whole world seems so unstable, and it does, go read the news, go listen to the reports, go go look outside your window in your world. And, you know, it's so unstable, it's so disruptive, it's so, you know, not unpeaceful. But you, are oh God, are so other than that. You are above all of these problems, all of these issues. You, are oh God, are my refuge and I can come to you and feel safe and peaceful and loved. So that's the first concept. The second part is at the end of Psalm 90, because the beginning part, because at the beginning of Psalm 90, it talks about this is a prayer from Moses, of Moses to God. And all the beginning part is basically talking about how God was angry and had um, let out his anger on the people, which we know occurred because Moses had to go get the people of God out of um, Egypt where they'd been or felt like they'd been abandoned by God for of, because of how they lived, because they didn't follow him anymore. They didn't obey him. 
the last part, Moses turns to God and asks for his compassion, asks for him to come and show favor upon people once again. And it's Psalm 90 verse 13. Turn, O Lord, how long? So how long will you turn towards us? How long will you turn your back against us? Have compassion on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Isn't that beautiful? Satisfy me in the morning, Lord, because of your steadfast love. And I'll just be, I'll be satisfied all of my days. I'll rejoice. I'll be happy. I'll be content. And as many years as we have seen evil, let your work be manifest to your servants. So even in the years that's gone before when we've seen so much evil and wrong and sin, no, bring your good works and manifest. Show it to us who are now surrendering to you because we're your servants. And you'll bring us, show us your glorious power to your children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and prosper for us the work of our hands. Oh, prosper the work of our hands. He's asking for God's blessing. Show your favor upon us, Lord. Prosper the work of our hands. Who doesn't want the work of their hands to prosper? A farmer. He's, he's working in the field. He's, heart, he's planting. He's, he's preparing the soil. He's seeding. He's harvesting. Does he not want a good harvest? The work of his hands. Parents who bring children up, aren't they the work of their hands? Anyone in business, however they, whatever the business is, don't they want it to prosper? The work of their hands? And we ask our God to favour the work of our hands, our businesses, our parenting, and the way we live, the food that we need, spiritually, physically, mentally, for our body, for our soul, for our mind. We ask the blessing of the Lord. So we're going to pray today, this morning, and we're going to remind God or we're going to remind ourselves of who God is and the dwelling place that we have to be dwelling with him in him how how miraculously and how mysteriously that is because you know when we go to receive holy communion before we do we're, we're invited into this, again, this intimate relationship with God. And we say, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof. We're not worthy. But it's what Jesus did on the cross that makes us worthy, makes us righteous before the living God. And he dwells within us. He tells us. Abide in me and I will abide in you. So we're going to now pray that God would bless the work of our hands. That we would surrender more into this dwelling place. This place that, that he provides for us, that he encourages us and draws us to himself, himself. Himself is the dwelling place where we abide and we will find true love, peace, contentment and favour for the work of our hands. Let us pray this morning. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh God, our God, my God, your God. You ask us to come and dwell with you, to surrender our lives to you. Well, this morning we come and tell you, to the best of our ability, where we are right now, we surrender 
our lives to you. Dwell within us. We are not worthy, but please, we invite you to dwell within us. You are our refuge. You are our strength. You are our delight. What a beautiful word, Lord, delight. You such delightful. How delightful you are to be with you, Lord. How delightful it is. How wonderful are you. Lord, we come today and we ask for your favour. We ask you to bless the work of our hands, whatever the work that we are doing right now is. The work might be just spending time with people, loving them, sharing with them, caring for them. Not necessarily feeling like you're building or working something, but working in what you desire us to do. What's our purpose, Lord, right here, right now? Bless us. Show us your favour. Oh God, help us to see the fruit of the works of our hands. Lord God, may we somehow touch the world for you be bold and share about you. But very much may we, O oh Lord, spend more time with you, quality time, where we focus ourselves for our relationship with you, that it is so important that we prioritize you, O oh God, in our lives, that we put you first. That we can truly say that we are satisfied in the morning because of what you have done for us, with us, to us. Because you have spent time with us, oh God. How precious you are. Show us how we can do more things for you. And not even doing things, but just dwelling with you more, loving you more. As David said, create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me so that I may worship you with this pure and clean heart, that I may seek you out and that I may be bold and do what you desire, the work of of my hands is. And we ask all of this with your strength, with your ability, with your spirit dwelling within us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How blessed it is to know that we have this refuge in our God, this dwelling place forever and ever, from everlasting to everlasting, no time restraints, no generational restraints. God is there. He is God. And he invites us into this wonderful relationship with him. I pray for myself that I accept him every day. Pray for yourself. Pray that God would entice you even more to come and spend time with you. Have a blessed day and I'll see you again next week.